All right, good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for joining with our virtual college fair this evening. Um, this is the St. Louis Four School College Virtual Fair. And so we're glad to have you here tonight and have some great presenters ready to share awesome information about each of their schools with you tonight. So just a reminder, this is the six by six virtual fair event. So that format means that we have six great schools ready to share information with you in six minutes. That's not an easy task. So let me warn you um, that they're gonna share some terrific information with you and it's gonna be fast. And in that six minute time frame, this is just to kind of um, give you a little bit to whet your appetite. I certainly invite you to go to the websites to utilize the contact information that our presenters share with you in the chat feature um, and to really you know, take the opportunity to get to know these schools well beyond this session tonight. This is to give you a start, um, but do what you need to do to visit virtually, physically if you can, um, and to get in contact with the folks here on the call and back at their home offices um, as well. So again, we're excited to have you here tonight. What we're gonna do here is if you have any questions for our presenters tonight, please click on the Q&A button below at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You'll be able to put your question in there and they will respond back to you privately. You can also keep your eye out on the chat feature because information will be shared with you there. It's a one-way feature. So they'll drop contact information and website links, things like that over to you. I usually recommend that you click it and save it or bookmark it, save it for um, in another document for later use um, whatever works best for you. So just a reminder that your camera and your microphone are off, but our presenters can see your questions in that Q&A feature. There are a ton more college presentations happening, so we invite you to continue to sign up for sessions, and you can do that back at the website where you originally registered for this one. And my final housekeeping item for right now is that this session is being recorded so that you can go back and watch it on demand um, if you need to watch it at a later date or you want to share it with somebody, you want to go back and grab some information. So in about a week, this will be posted back at strivescan.com slash St. Louis for school. All right. So without further ado, we're going to start at the top of our presenting order, which I will also drop in the chat for you with Lake Forest College. And I'm going to turn it over to Karina. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, let's see. Here you go. So my name is Karina Henderson and I'm the admissions counselor at Lake Forest College and I work with all students in St. Louis and Missouri in general. So it's nice to talk to you all today. So if you aren't familiar with Lake Forest, we are a small private liberal arts college 30 miles north of Chicago. We have 1,585 students from 43 states and 96 countries. So a little bit less than half of our students are coming from outside of the state of Illinois. So if you are interested in a global campus, you want to get out of state, then Lake Forest is definitely a good school to have on your list for that. So there are a couple of aspects of Lake Forest that I really enjoy talking about um, as I've learned more about the college since working there. The first is through our pragmatic liberal arts education, the career preparation that we provide our students, our location, and then our values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today. So with the pragmatic liberal arts approach that Lake Forest has, since we're a liberal arts college, we really give our students the opportunity to study all different kinds of things. Um, but that emphasis is on experiential learning. And so experiential learning is just learning through experience. And we actually have a requirement for all of our students to do just that. So students can complete up to three internships for credit. They can have funded research. We have over 200 study abroad programs and a off-campus program in the loop downtown Chicago that students can study in. So that hands-on learning experience is a key part of that liberal arts curriculum. Since I said students really can explore, um, that first year of college is a great opportunity for students to start to figure out what it is that they want to study. Many of our students will have multiple majors, multiple minors, um, and we also have a self-design major. So if there's something that you want to study that Lake Forest doesn't have, you can actually create that program for yourself. So there's a lot of flexibility within that. Our career preparation also contributes to that flexibility and, and support for students. You get connected with a career advisor from day one and the Career Advancement Center really supports our students in figuring out what life will look like after college. We have a 98% career placement rate. So 98% of our students within six months of graduation are in their career field or they're getting another degree. So for example, going to law school. So you definitely know what you're going to do after graduation if you go to Lake Forest. 
I'll tell you, Chicago's really fun. If you've never visited before, I highly recommend it. I love the city. And the Lake Forest is a suburb of Chicago. So it really is great for students who want the best of both worlds. They get a traditional residential college experience when they live at Lake Forest on campus, but then they still get access to the city. Um, our Lake Forest professors oftentimes will utilize the city as a way to basically take field trips um, to help students kind of explore the city. Um, for example, biology professors will sometimes take, take their students down um, to Northwestern Medical School to kind of look around and see what it's like to be in medical school, for example. So there are all different types of ways that students can utilize the city for their academics. And it's only about an hour train ride. So we have the Metro, which is a commuter rail that will take students from the suburbs down into the city. And it's only a 10 minute walk to campus. So it's very accessible if you want to explore the city for a variety of reasons. And then that last piece focuses on diversity, equity, inclusion. As I mentioned, we have students coming from all over the world. And so that means that the type of support that we need to provide our students has to also be diverse and focusing on all the needs of our students. So a couple of different departments to highlight, our Office of Intercultural Relations supports students in their social and cultural um, endeavors while they're on campus. They're always having supportive events on campus. All of our multicultural student groups come from that office. We have the Health and Wellness Center, which is there for students um, in order to make sure that you have your mental health and your physical health taken care of. And then the Center for Academic Success. So when you go to a small school like Lake Forest, there is that focus on being able to be in small class sizes and have that support one-on-one -on -one academically. It's also a great opportunity for students who maybe have had any kind of learning accommodations while in high school to take advantage of what their plan can look like when they're in college. So all of that goes to show the type of support that's automatically built into the structure of the college. Of course, when you're thinking about college, it's going to be important to also consider the financial aid piece. And so at Lake Forest, every single student who applies is automatically considered for a merit scholarship. And so merit scholarships are based on your academic performance in high school. We have this really nifty chart that you can actually find on our website if you wanna take a look at it again later, um, but it focuses on your weighted GPA and then your standardized test score. We are test optional. We have been for many years and we will continue to be. So you don't have to spend a test score if you don't want to, but this chart is a really nice way to kind of anticipate, you know, what kind of scholarship you could potentially receive if you apply to Lake Forest. You'll also receive a $2,000 grant added to your financial aid package if you participate in some kind of um, on-campus event or virtual event. We've opened that up because of the pandemic to virtual events as well. If you want to learn more about Lake Forest, we have a couple of different opportunities for you. You can schedule an in-person visit to tour campus with a current Lake Forest student, or you can schedule a virtual visit, which is an opportunity to talk to me, a student, and maybe someone else in the Lake Forest community that you're interested in. And then we also have a virtual tour. So it's a 3D tour that you can do on your own on our website and look through every single part of campus. And so I highly recommend it, certainly if you've never been to Lake Forest and especially if you um, are thinking about it in the future. And then this is my contact information. I will go ahead and put it in the chat as well. Thank you so much, Karina, for sharing information about Lake Forest tonight. And yes, definitely drop your information in the chat. And I see some questions coming through. So students continue to throw your questions in that Q&A for our great panelists to be able to respond to tonight. All right, we're gonna go over to Milk and you and I'll toss it over to Gavin. Thank you. Everybody, my name is Gavin Halpin, and I am a St. Louis Regional Recruiter for Millican University. So I work with students like yourselves uh, in the St. Louis area, but also without uh, the whole state of Missouri. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you unfamiliar with where Millican might be located, if you look at the state of Illinois uh, map there at the bottom and see the blue icon, we are about as central Illinois as you can get, being in between uh, Springfield, Illinois, about 30 minutes to our west, and Champaign, Illinois, about 45 minutes to our east, so right in that middle belt. Uh, the Decatur community is made up of about 70,000 uh, population-wise, and we have a great working relationship between our campus community and the community we're located in, in Decatur. So if you look in the top right-hand corner, you'll see just a pic of our downtown area. It does have kind of a small town feel to it, 
a lot of nice restaurants and shops within that downtown area. But it, I always like to highlight this is because we have a variety of uh, student run ventures that take place in that downtown community. So in previous years, we've had a uh, student run coffee shop that takes place there. We have regularly a student run art gallery space that is highlighting not only rotating students work, but also even alumni can submit uh, material to be showcased and potentially sold there as well as we have a student run black box theater for our interested uh, students in all aspects of the, the theater piece. It doesn't matter if you're majoring or not, but that's something that as well, that our members of our Decatur community are interacting with and uh, helping make our students feel more at home. Uh, likewise, it's not uncommon to see members of the community on our campus for lectures, uh, performances of a variety, uh, and as well, athletic events. We are a division three institution. I know many schools can, uh, tout a lot of rankings. I won't read all of these to you, but the one that I think is uh, really perfect to mention is that third one listed as a number three best college in Illinois to land you a job. We have a very career focused uh, plan to education and we want our students, uh, and uh, the goal would be, you know, after four years, you're walking across the stage. By the time you have the diploma, the plan is in place for what that next step is going to be. So very early on, regardless of the major you would have with us, we want to make sure that we're helping prepare you for the next step. So it's great to be rewarded and recognized uh, knowing that there are many options within the Midwest, but also just alone within the state of Illinois. So we're proud to have that number three best college in Illinois to land you a job. Here's a good snapshot of the institution. So we are that small private institution with 2000 total students. Our average class size is 15 and then our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So there are, you would never be taught by a TA or teacher's assistant at Millican. You're going to be taught by a faculty member and most likely one that has the highest degree within their field. If you see the top right hand corner, you'll see that we have 50 plus academic programs. I'll break down the individual colleges and schools in just a second. And then following up again, we are a division three institution with 23 men's and women's sports. Uh, so a great opportunity for the student to be a student athlete at that division three level. Here are the four individual colleges and schools we offer at Millican. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences that's gonna house your humanities as well as the traditional sciences. So your chemistry, biology, psychology are there, but as well your communication, history, political science are within there. I always make the distinction for families at our institution. If a student comes in and is interested in going on to pre-med or a med school, vet school, law school, uh, they would be advised in a secondary advisor process with us. So there's going, they're going to be advised on that pre-professional track but most likely their major is going to be within the College of Arts and Sciences. For example, the, the student interested in going on to med school is going to be majoring in most likely chemistry or biology uh, within the College of Arts and Sciences, but being advised by a secondary advisor to make sure that they're at or exceeding the expectations for that next school. Next, we see the College of Fine Arts that has houses four distinct schools within it. Our School of Art, our School of Arts Technology, our School of Music, and then our School of Theater and Dance. Our School of Theater and Dance is the one that we probably see the most volume of all of our individual programs, more specifically our Bachelor of Fine Arts or BFA in Musical Theater. Then we see our College of Professional Studies that has the nursing, education, exercise science, and sport areas. And then we have our uh, School of Business as well that has all facets outside of even just the, the general business administration. When it comes to opportunities for involvement on our campus, we have 90 plus student organizations. I think it's helpful to think of individual opportunities for involvement as bubbles. So there's the athletic and wellness bubble, there's the fine arts and performance bubble, there is the Greek life bubble, student life, uh, Senate wise, I mean, on and on and on. On average, a Millican student ends up in three organizations. So even the student that comes in and says, I'm just gonna do theater or I'm just gonna play baseball, uh, chances are over the course of their four years, they end up dipping their toes in a couple other uh, puddles along the way, we'll say. One of those opportunities for involvement would be the opportunity to study abroad. Uh, we see a lot of majors even have the option for students to, uh, within their junior year, go and it, you know, not affect them having to take additional courses to still be on that four year trajectory with us. We have that traditional go away for a semester experience, but also even more immersion type experiences where seven to 10 day faculty led excursion uh, to a fun location. So that's something that I think our students look forward to doing. And that leads me to, if any of this sounded appealing to you at all, uh, for students, we are still accepting applications on the senior side of things on a rolling basis. We are test optional uh, for this year and for this next recruitment cycle. Truly all we would need to see would be your high school transcripts. 
we are have our regular app, but we're also a member of the Common App. Uh, but I would be your contact, so I will put my info in the chat. Feel free to reach out with any further questions. I am here to help. So thanks so much for attending. Terrific. Thank you, Gavin, for all that great information. All right, headed over to Columbia College Chicago and Stephen, all yours. Thanks so much, Danielle. All right, good evening, everyone. So excited to be here with you and thank you for joining us. My name is Stephen Barnes. Uh, I am an admission counselor at Columbia College Chicago, uh, specifically the counselor for all students in Missouri, uh, and actually am originally from St. Louis myself. So really excited to be chatting with all of you tonight. Columbia College Chicago is a college for creatives based right in the heart of downtown Chicago. Uh, we provide an interesting blend of the creative and performing arts, along with the liberal arts, as well as business education and business skills. And so just to kind of kick us off a little bit of Columbia by the numbers, as I said, we are a mid-sized institution. So we've got about 7,000 students total, the vast majority of which are undergrads. Um, so you will be joining an institution that is very undergraduate focused um, and brings in about 1,700 new students each year between our freshmen and our transfer students. We've got about 60 different majors to offer. And then when you throw in our uh, minors and certificates as well, it's about 100 different programs. I'll highlight those here in just a second. Um, the vast majority of our freshmen do live on campus. So 71% of our first year students live on campus. That's not a requirement. Uh, after the first year, you may choose to move off campus and get an apartment with friends here in the city of Chicago and kind of enjoy that, that urban city life. Um, but that first year, you can definitely expect that sort of traditional residential campus experience. Um, we also love to highlight the diversity of our campus, which we feel reflects the diversity of the city that we're based in. So 42% of our students identify as students of color. 16% of our students are the first in their family to go off to college. About a third of our campus identifies as a member of the LGBTQIA population. Uh, and then we've got students from all 50 states and 60 different countries when you include our international students. So it's a beautiful, vibrant, diverse community of creatives. You see our average high school GPA there, that is truly an average, not by any means a, a minimum requirement to be considered for admission, but just to give you a sense of where our students are coming in at. Um, and I'd love to highlight the fact that starting with the fall of 2022, or, or really the 2022 application cycle, um, we are officially going test free. That means that even if you were to submit an SAT or ACT, we won't even look at it. It will play no bearing on either admission or scholarship decisions. To highlight a few aspects of the educational experience at Columbia, first of all, you should know that you are gonna have hands-on immersion in your intended field from day one. So yes, you'll be doing some of those liberal arts and sciences classes, but you'll be diving right into your intended major from the first year, getting hands-on experience within that creative field and getting to build on that over the course of your entire four years. We have a small average class size, about 19 on average, but really as you climb up in your major, it's gonna be even smaller than that, where you really get to know your faculty well. And on that note, our faculty are industry experts. So they are, most of them are still working within their particular field. They're not just in the classroom teaching. They are bringing that industry expertise into the classroom. They know what's going on in sort of the current uh, environment of those fields and bringing those conversations into the classroom and then even connecting our students to opportunities like internships and practicums. This is just a slice of our majors and opportunities. I would encourage you to go to column.edu slash majors for more, but generally our majors kind of fall into the buckets of audio communication and writing, media arts, performing arts, and then visual arts and business. I would say we're pretty well known for our film and television program, as well as our musical theater and acting programs. Um, but at Columbia, you can study anything uh, from game design to audio arts, and music to advertising, uh, social media and digital strategy, art history, business and entrepreneurship and more. In terms of life outside the classroom, well, first of all, you're gonna be in the third largest city in the country and right in the heart of it. Chicago has so much to offer in terms of culture and city life. We've got 77 amazing, diverse, beautiful neighborhoods. But on campus, we also have plenty to keep you busy with over 70 clubs and organizations, constant creative activities and pursuits that our students are putting on. 
Um, so there's hundreds of campus events each year. And then of course our residence centers are designed with a creative student in mind. Um, the application process, you'll be jumping into that eventually and I'll be happy to help you individually on that. But I really wanna highlight the fact that we have a strong commitment to financial aid. At Columbia, there are three different types of scholarship aid available, merit-based, need-based, and talent-based scholarships. And all you have to do to maximize your possibilities for scholarship is to one, apply for admission, two, submit your FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, and three, submit an audition or portfolio to be considered for that talent-based scholarship. Some of our majors do require a portfolio for admission. So our BFA and BMUSE programs, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music would require that for admission in addition to being considered for the talent-based scholarship. And then our Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science programs, they don't require a portfolio for admission, but you can submit one to be considered for that scholarship. Ultimately, 97% of our freshmen come in with aid, 96% of our transfer students, and you can see that they've got some really strong average financial aid packages there. I'm going to leave it at that for now. You can reach out to me anytime for more questions. Um, so here is my information, email and phone. I'll drop it in the chat as well. And I'd love for you to go check out columbedu slash admissions slash discover to explore more or check us out on any social media at Columb Admit. Thanks so much for being here. I can't wait to hear from you. Drop some questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much, Stephen. Great transition because yes, please keep your questions coming um, and keep checking the chat as our presenters share their information in there with you. We'll head over to Gwen um, to present on behalf of McKendree University. All right, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so my name is Gwen Toho Makeham. I'm an admission counselor at McKendree University and actually um, do work with students from the state of Missouri. So um, McKendree is a small uh, private liberal arts school. Uh, we're located in Lebanon, Illinois, um, which is probably about 45 minutes um, for most of you, maybe an hour or more. Um, so we also are the oldest college in the state of Illinois. Um, we have about 40 students from 40 different states, 40 different countries. Um, most of our students come from the state of Illinois, although many students come from Missouri. Um, and then we also have quite a few international students coming from countries as far away as, you know, Brazil, Italy, and Thailand. Um, we have about 1,500 students on campus. Our student to faculty ratio is about 14 to 1. So definitely a small school um, where you're definitely going to have small classes. So in terms of academics, we do have over 50 different academic programs. Um, some of these programs include biopsychology, cybersecurity, athletic training, sports management, just to name a few. Um, but we've got a plethora of other um, professions and, and degrees to choose from. You can scan the QR code um, if you want um, and, and to learn more. Um, so, you know, at McKendree, you're going to learn not just like, you know, how to think, but you know, and, and what to think, um, but you are going to, um, you know, learn across different disciplines. That's the nature of a liberal arts institution. Um, about half of our students will complete an internship in any given year. Um, and so we are very proud of the fact that we've also got about 98% postgraduate success rate across all of our different programs. And within about six months, the Bearcat alumni here are either employed or they're enrolled in graduate school. Outside the classroom, um, there's really no shortage of things to do. We've got um, lots of different registered clubs and organizations, honor societies, community service organizations, intramurals. Um, we also have a lot of things to do with music, whether it's choir, band, marching band, the arts or theater. Um, we are also only about 30 minutes from St. Louis. And so, um, you know, obviously being so close to downtown St. Louis um, provides you with a lot of different cultural and recreational opportunities. We also partner with universities in St. Louis for programs such as our three plus three pre-law program with SLU, plus the three plus two occupational program with WashU. So at McKendree, we are proud members of the NCAA Division II Great Lakes Valley Conference. We are able to offer athletic scholarships. Um, so be sure to check out um, the Bearcats at MCK Bearcats on Instagram and Twitter. We do have everything from football and basketball, lacrosse, swimming. We even have bowling and bass fishing as well. So check out some of those sports on our website for a full list. 
So here's our entire admission process at a glance. We do offer rolling admissions in which you can apply for free, either using the free McKendry application or the common application. Um, for this year, we only required the transcript. Um, also this year, we did not utilize the SAT or ACT test scores for fall 2021. Going into fall 2022, um, that decision has not yet been made as to whether we'll use ACT or SAT scores for admission decisions or academic scholarship decisions, but we should hopefully know more about that within the next couple of months. Um, so just stay in tune and, and ask me um, as we get closer to June, uh, to June 1 or July 1, okay? Um, so in terms of the scholarships that we offer um, for this, this kind of gives you a snapshot of what we offered for this year for fall 2021. Um, our scholarships this year were based on a high school GPA out of a 4.0 scale. Scholarships ranged from 10 to $17,000. Minimum GPA was a 2.75 um, to get the $10,000 all the way up to 17,000 with a 3.75 or higher GPA. Um, again, this will be a reassessed after this year and we'll let you know if the criteria is going to change going forward for fall 2022. We do encourage you to complete the free application for federal student aid. Um, this will allow us to make sure that we get you the most aid possible um, in terms of federal aid. Um, we also offer academic and um, academic and athletic scholarships um, along with other McKendry institutional aid. So definitely want to do everything we can to, to make the experience um, possible for you here at McKendry. So just in kind of wrapping up, um, just make sure you do follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook for any updates. I've put my contact information here. And um, you know, just to let you know, we are offering uh, visits both uh, in person and virtual. We've actually been in class since August, so pretty much through the entire year. We are also offering some Saturday visits as well. Um, so you can actually schedule a visit on our website uh, and request any specific meetings that you'd like to have with uh, college coaches or professors. So um, again, thank you so much for your time and I'll put my uh, contact information in the chat. Thank you. Terrific, thank you very much, Gwen, um, for presenting some great information tonight. Head it over to Bradley University and I'll turn it over to you, April. Hi everyone, my name is April Bauer. I'm Associate Director of Admission for Bradley and I'm also a regional representative. So I actually live closer to St. Louis than I do Peoria. I handle Kansas, Missouri, Central Southern Illinois and Arkansas. So thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Peoria, Illinois, Bradley, we're actually located in the second largest city in the state of Illinois, downstate from Chicago. So from the St. Louis area, I'm a big St. Louis Cardinals fan. So I always tell my families, we are about two hours and 20 minutes away. We were standing at Bush Stadium, Bush Stadium rooting on the Cardinals. With our city, we do have uh, Peoria City in the Peoria County area of about 350 to 370 total thousand, um, thousand people that join our city and our uh, surrounding areas. So we definitely will welcome you to Peoria and the hilltop of Bradley University. And so we are a mid-size university. We have just under 6,000 total students. You can see we are primarily an undergraduate institution, but we do have some wonderful opportunities in our grad school and a grad program. But we are a mid-size university. So what's great about that is you have the size of a great university, but then we also have that more personalized experience as all of our majors are direct entry in as incoming freshmen. We do sit on top of a hill in Peoria. So anytime you're visiting campus, you may be welcomed by saying, welcome to the hilltop. We do have about 85 acres. So if you were on one end of campus to walk to the other end, it's a totally flat campus and it is about a 10 to 15 minute walk so it is a very walkable campus. Our residential halls are located near the middle along with all of our academic buildings. 
we have 185 undergraduate majors for you to explore. Everything from business to communications, fine arts, game design, animation, photography, graphic design, social media marketing. College of Education and Health Sciences actually houses all of our education majors, our nursing and our full physical therapy program. Engineering and technology is one of the most popular and one of probably the most traditional ones that I hear from alumni in the St. Louis area. So we have everything from mechanical engineering to construction to manufacturing to chemical engineering. We do offer a wide variety of opportunities. And then of course, our largest school is our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. I always tell my families it's pretty much everything from A to Z that you can think of in our liberal arts and sciences area. So average class size for Bradley is around 17 and student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. We love our size. We love um, the 5,600 total students and 100% of our faculty are in the classroom. They are dedicated to educating you and really expanding your environment in the classroom as well as out of the classroom and in the real world experience. Speaking of real world experience, Bradley, every graduate that graduates from Bradley with their bachelor's degree is required to have two years of experiential learning. That's everything from your, your study abroad opportunities, internships, co-ops, research with our faculty, clinicals, your student teaching. We wanna make sure that you are not only educated in the classroom, but you also have to gain that experience outside of the classroom that will certainly help build your resume. We want you Definitely to focus on the academics, but we want you to have that college experience. So this is a quick view of what to expect. Over 240 student organizations we present for our all of our students from freshman through senior. And you can see a wide variety of numbers and all of the different programs and organizations that we offer. And we are division one in our NCAA sports. We are a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. So the application process is very easy. Me being your admissions recruiter, I get to work with you and your family from the beginning all the way until the college decision is made. I read your application, I decide and help with your scholarships, and then I'm your financial aid advisor. So I truly will walk through the entire experience with you. It is very easy to apply. We are certainly staying test optional. We were going to be test optional before the pandemic hit. So we are rolling right through and keeping that test optional strategy and holistic admission approach available for you. We would need application, transcripts, personal statement as requirements. And I will work with you individually on what's the best track for you. Visit opportunities. We are now in person. So please check out our visit opportunities. Of course, we have a ton of virtual options and we will work with you to make it the best experience on and virtually on campus. So the success rate for Bradley is 94%. So please check us out, visit the website, contact me. Please take a screenshot of my information. I'll drop it in the chat. And I really look forward to working with you all. Have a great evening. Thank you so much, April. All right, and everybody continue, like we said, those questions coming and put, put um, you know, whatever questions you have in the Q&A and keep an eye out in the chat for some great contact information. All right, and last but certainly not least, you're gonna hear from the University of Chicago and we've got Zach presenting tonight. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for sticking around. And hopefully you're getting a lot of great information. I've certainly enjoyed hearing from my colleagues here tonight. Um, I'm Zach Evans, Deputy Director of Admissions at the University of Chicago. Um, like you've heard from others folks here tonight, I'm also a St. Louis native, so you can tell we certainly love to try to get our hometowns when we can. Um, and so I was keeping track of the Cardinals, uh, Cardinals game. Looks like it's still scoreless for those of you who aren't watching it right now. But let's talk about the University of Chicago. Um, we are a mid-sized liberal arts college, just about seven 
7,000 students located about 7,000, 7, 7 miles south of downtown Chicago. Um, we also have uh, 9,500 graduate students. So overall, a pretty large place, but the main focus at U Chicago is in the undergraduate college, which is our single, single largest unit. If you look at the picture here, we've got a few famous faces, at least in our world. Um, Georgiana Simpson, the bottom left, first African-American woman to get her PhD from the University of Chicago. Enrico Fermi in the bottom right, um, Actually, sorry, Jay Berwinger in top middle, um, first Heisman Trophy winner ever, Jay, uh, 1935, back when we were the original Monsters in the Midway before the Chicago Bears stole that nickname as well as the C on their helmets. But in 1939, we got rid of our football team and uh, went uh, doubled down into the research that we had started in 1890 when we were founded. And Enrico Fermi conducted the first controlled self-sustaining nuclear reaction underneath the old football stadium. Um, uh, we now actually manage the Fermi Institute in Chicago, which is one of the uh, uh, two uh, institutes that we manage, including Argonne National Lab that we manage for the U.S. Department of Energy. Now, when you come to campus, you're going to study in three main areas. Uh, you choose a major, you take elective courses, but all students study in the University of Chicago core curriculum. It's the humanities, social, physical, and biological sciences, math, foreign language, civilizations, and the arts, but no two students have the same core. So there are five different social science sequences, eight different humanity sequences, and you can actually use your civilizations and language studies. Uh, you can study abroad for those. We actually have about half of our students studying abroad. We have our own centers in Paris, Beijing, Delhi, and Hong Kong, but we go to over 30 cities around the world. So no two students have the same core. It's meant to be flexible. It's meant to give you a wide ranging uh, 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 field of study while also diving deep into any one of those areas. Um, but you have until your third year to officially declare your major. And so that's the second third of your education where we have over 50 majors and 40 minors offered at East Chicago that range pretty widely. So whether you're interested in economics or English or the biological sciences, chemistry or computer science or something in the arts, we certainly have something for everyone. About 25% of our students double major and about half of our students have a major and a minor. As you can see from our screen here, we certainly like to keep classes small. So five to one student to faculty ratio, those core discussion-based classes are capped at 19 students each and 85% of our classes have 25 students or fewer. Now, one of the things I think we, uh, I certainly think we do well at East Chicago is supporting our students outside the classroom. So 80% of our students conduct research and every student is assigned both an academic advisor as well as a career advisor. You can see these careers in programs on the right. Our career services office uh, has these uh, several different programs here in a variety of different industries. What you can expect if you join these programs, which are of course not majors, they're meant to partner with whatever major you choose, is that you'll get specialized advising. We bring in guest speakers and conduct workshops in these different areas. We also travel to different parts of the country and internationally to expose our students to these various industries. You can take graduate level courses at our business school, the Booth School of Business through the business program. We partner with our uh, medical school and our law school for those pre-professional options. And overall, 95% uh, sorry, 95 of our students in the class of 2020 graduated with their uh, jobs or graduate school in place. So the day they graduated, walked across the stage or uh, virtually walked across the stage, got their diploma, they had their plan set in place. So that's just one of the ways that we support students outside of the classroom. Now, of course, uh, we are in the city of Chicago. We're a residential campus. We sit on 217 acres. We are registered botanical garden in the city of Chicago. And students are living in the dorms. Uh, they live in this community called a house, which is a smaller unit within a dormitory. Each house is about 100 students. They have their own traditions and rivalries with other houses and things like our annual scavenger hunt, which is one of the largest scavenger hunt in the world, or us or intramural sports and other activities. And so your house is your first community on campus where you first meet people and get engaged in, in, in the university community. But we offer over 400 student organizations from there. And so they range pretty widely from the Blue Chips Investment Group to the Zombie Readiness Task Force to University Theater, which puts on 35 productions per year. We do have 20 varsity sports at the division three level. So even though we got rid of our division one program a century ago, we do have a lot of really great sports teams that compete nationally. And I couldn't give this slide, but of course, just making sure I highlight the fact that we have dollar milkshake Wednesdays at UChicago. The pandemic did not keep those down. Um, those are alive and well. Now, just a few quick notes on the application process. Um, we uh, are on the coalition and the common application 
we are a test optional university. We've been test optional since 2018. And so that's something we're definitely also expecting to continue. But the thing that's gonna, I think, stand out in our application process is that we require uh, a supplement with a few, I think, fun essays. The first is, why do you wanna come to our school? That's pretty common for colleges to ask. What's a little more uncommon are some of our prompts that allow you to really think outside the block box. Things like find X, Where's Waldo? How do you feel about Wednesday? Explain your favorite joke without ruining it. A couple of years ago, we asked students, how did you get caught or not get caught? Um, some students told us some awful things. Um, and it's really, a, hopefully, a fun way to apply. So if you choose to apply to U Chicago, um, hopefully you have fun with the application process. Hopefully you keep um, learning about all of our colleges here and so you can make an informed college decision. But thanks for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much, Zach, for sharing some great information tonight and to all of our presenters for sharing on behalf of your different institutions. And so as we wrap up the panel here um, at the end of our session together, I have a question that will just go quickly round robin through each one of the presenters. I think we'll probably only get to one question based on timing, but you have such a wealth of information. What is some advice you would give to the students on the call tonight as they're going through the college search process. So we'll start back up at the top with Karina from Lake Forest and we'll go in the exact same order. So you can just go one right after the other. Awesome. So great question. I would say to be open-minded in the schools that you're looking at. Um, so if you automatically feel like, yes, you definitely want to stay in Missouri, like maybe pick a couple of places outside in the state surrounding or the vice versa. If you think that you're not going to be in Missouri at all, take a look. Um, you know, be open minded about where, the location, the size, the type of school that you're looking at. Great advice. I would say that kind of a selfish plug. We are we are here to help you throughout your process. There are many of us as there are many schools. So utilize us, even if you think your question is uh, not a serious one, regardless of where you're at within their college search, utilize us. Utilize current students, if you know, from your high school that are at an institution, um, just to get as much from the student perspective. We love to talk about our schools, but hearing from someone who's there every day living it, I think is a good resource as well. Great advice coming out of this group. So um, I always like to take this question from the creative school perspective. So if you are going to be applying for creative programs, applying to art schools, um, you definitely should be thinking about your creative practice. You should be thinking about why you create the type of art you create. What is it, you know, that, how is it that you like to communicate through your art? Um, if you don't already have some pieces or performances or portfolios or whatever it might be ready to go, then consider using this upcoming summertime to start working on that. Um, because whether it's a school like Columbia, where you may or may not need it for admission, but you might need it for scholarship, or schools where you do need those portfolio materials just to be admitted, um, they're going to want to not only see your work, but see how you talk about your work. So start giving that some thought. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, just be truly, um, you know, um, you know, individualize yourself and really think about what your interests are and what your passions are. Um, you know, don't follow your friends where you think that they're going to go or maybe where you think that they want you to go. But, you know, just really think about what you want. Um, if you don't know exactly what you want or what you're looking for, try to think big picture and kind of narrow it down. You know, think about do I want to be in state or out of state? Do I want to be within two hours from home or maybe four or five or, or, or more hours than that? So just kind of think about that. Start big and kind of narrow it down. But Go where you want to go, not where your friends want you to go. So I'm, I'm definitely going to take a little bit of a different action here, especially winding up our seniors for this year, uh, being so close to May 1st. Words of wisdom, when you apply to the university or when you start engaging in new conversation with the university, try not to use your school email address because so many times the universities get blocked from sending you very important emails. I know we have a ton of marketing emails going your way, but there are important emails that are being sent to you that are being blocked. So get a new personal or get a family college email. Um, that would probably be my words of wisdom and my best advice 23 years into recruiting and being an admission counselor. And make sure that email address is appropriate. 
too. Um, seen some weird ones out there over over the years. Um, the the thing that I would jump in here is that this is a long process. You've got you know from here, if you're a junior especially or wherever you are in the process, um, don't let it take up every night of the week's conversation. Um, the, the 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 practice I find has been helpful to recommend is to you know have one night of the week and one half hour or one hour of the week that you're like this is college time with the family where we're going to talk about. How things are going, what I've been hearing, what or what I'm seeing, what I'm looking at, what my top choices are, what the deadline, what you know, let that conversation happen naturally over the course of weeks. You don't have to solve it in the course of one week by talking about it every day. Um, so, so set aside a time, uh, one time per week, half hour, an hour, to make sure you're getting what you need to discuss, but that it's not eating up every part of your life. Because this is for those of you who are uh, rising seniors, this is your last year living at home with your folks probably. And so take advantage of the positive that that can be. Thank you so much to everyone for your words of wisdom and for the information that you've shared here tonight and for the students on the call, really take advantage. You know, this process is about you. Um, you are at the heart of it. It can be overwhelming, but it does not have to be. And everybody here on this call really wanna help you with that process. And so do the people back on the campuses that they represent. So ask your questions. The only silly question is the one you don't ask. And believe me, we've heard it all. Um, so thank you for being here tonight. A couple of quick things for you, for our students on the call, once you close out of the Zoom session tonight, you're going to get a quick survey, four questions. Go ahead and leave some feedback for us. It always helps to keep making sure we offer great events to you all. Sign up for more sessions. There's a ton of great college presentations still happening. And you can sign up back where you originally registered for this session tonight. And the last thing I'll leave you with is just a reminder again that if you want to watch this on demand, if you want to go back and grab um, the recording to share with somebody else, um, you'll be able to do that in just about a week. And you'll do that at strivescan.com slash St. Louis for school. So you'll be able to grab that recording and watch it on your own time again. So thank you again to everybody who presented. Thank you to everybody who joined and we hope you stay well. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.